everyone. Thank you for coming to my lecture recital. Today, I would like to talk about contemporary composer Richard Faith. In the summer of 2014, I went to Tucson, Arizona to meet the well-known American composer Richard Faith. Earlier, while discussing various possibilities for my lecture recital topic with Dr. Stuart Gordon, he introduced me to Faith's piano music, and I became fascinated by his piano music style, so I chose his music for my research topic. Fortunately, Dr. Gordon knows Richard Faith personally, and was able to help me set up an appointment to interview the composer. These four hours of interview with him were very pleasant and productive, and I was even privileged to listen to him playing his own music and get a lesson from him on the piano works selected for this presentation. He is a very energetic and delightful man, and he was more than willing to share his love of music and discuss his work. Richard Faith was born on March 20, 1926, in Evansville, Indiana. He was raised by music-loving parents, so he grew up interested in music. His first piano lessons were at the age of eight with his 15-year-old cousin, Catherine Bleep, about whom he spoke fondly and often during our interview. He remembered she was really an excellent teacher who encouraged him to compose as well as play the piano. He said his first attempts at compositions were with really big quarter notes. Faith remembered also the awakening to his professional calling. He said, One day, I was walking up the stairs in the studio. I saw a picture of Beethoven, and just at that moment, I knew that I wanted to be a composer. It's a silly romantic story, but that's what I remember. That's what inspired me. I don't know why. In the fall of 1944, Faith entered the Chicago Musical College as a piano performance major, studying with Molly Margolis and Rudolf Ganz simultaneously. Both of whom he recalled were really great teachers he earned both a bachelor's and a master's degree in piano performance. In 1947, Faith started formal composition study with Max Wald at the Chicago Musical College. Faith stated that Wald was his most important mentor in composition. Faith studied with Wald for two years. He said, Max Wald, the first teacher, told me that someday I would be a composer instead of a pianist. And he was very supportive. He thought I had a big talent. I did my first piano sonata, the first movement of my piano sonata under him. Then I did an early violin sonata. When I wrote for him, I felt inspired. He later studied with Bernard Haydn at Indiana University, where Faith started the doctoral program in 1954. Unfortunately, he did not like Haydn's teaching. He said, Haydn thought that I have to write like him, which I certainly didn't want to do. During this period of time, Faith was pursuing a degree in composition. Without finishing the program, Faith accepted his first teaching position in 1956 at Morningside College in Sioux City, Iowa, 
as an assistant professor of music teaching piano. In 1960, he received a Fulbright Fellowship to study piano and composition in Rome at the St. Cecilia Conservatory under one of Europe's most famous pianists, Guido Agosti. During this time in Rome, he started composing his first piano concerto. After returning to the United States, Faith accepted a position at the University of Arizona in Tucson. Except for an interim year in 1968 at Morningside College, he spent the next 27 years in Tucson, becoming a full professor in 1978. Thus, Fate spent the greatest part of his career at the University of Arizona, where most of his most frequently performed compositions were composed. That output includes songs, quarter works, piano concertos, orchestral and chamber works, and operas. He remained at the University of Arizona until 1988. Faith's first published work was The Legend for a Piano, a little piano piece he composed at the age of 11 published by Sonny Burchard in 1967. Chinese Press began publishing his composition in 1968, followed by G. Schirmer in 1971, and Bellwin Mills in 1974. In the late 1970s, Faith's music achieved significant recognition with performance in London, Washington, D.C., New York, and Tucson. And several performances of his works were released on commercial record. From 1982 to 1988, he received annual awards from the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. Now in his 80s, Faith is still a very active composer. When I asked him he's currently working on, he stated his most recent interest is writing chamber music. Now let's talk about his musical style. Faith stated that Brahms is his favorite, along with Beethoven, of course, Perhaps surprisingly, he's not a big fan of Mozart. Like Brahms, Faith often uses big spreading chords as well as thick textures with fugal techniques. His harmonic language, however, is liberated from the conventional 18th and 19th century practices and seems closer to that of Debussy or Ravel especially in his earlier works. Even he admitted that there was a time when he was crazy about Debussy, even more so than Brahms at that time. Faith obviously felt that melody is always the most important element in his neo-romantic and impressionistic style. In the middle of piano lesson with him, he wanted me to emphasize melody line, and also he pointed out a certain passage wherein he deliberately placed a hidden melody. Let's examine the piece, pieces on today's program. The first piano sonata is in a traditional four movement pattern. It is worth noting that he follows the order first initiated by Beethoven in his Opus 26 of placing the scherzo movement second and the slow movement third. 
a pattern adapted by Chopin and other later composers. The uh, opening movement is in sonata allegro form with a lengthy development and a full recapitulation. As noted, Faith regards himself as a composer rooted in the Romantic tra tradition. However, several characteristics in the first movement disguise that fact to some degree. First, the traditional contrast between first and second theme in the exposition is mitigated by the fact that both themes are lyrical and both use somewhat ambiguous harmonic progressions. Let me illustrate. When the first theme appears in the exposition, it does so without harmonic support. is implied as a tonic in the opening phrases. The fourth and final phrase introduces an A-flat, a possible modal inflection, and ends on the second degree of the scale, a note that does not seem to function as a dominant harmony because of that A-flat. Next phrases, he harmonizes the melody, but with chords that seem to avoid common practice progressions, rather introducing non-harmonic tones and passing through sonorities that seem to feature intervals of fourth and fifth, opposed to the more traditional chords built in thirds. illustrate well Faith's use of harmony throughout the sonata, and to a great extent his harmonic language in general. As notes, the second theme is not strongly contrasting either in rhythmic or harmonic characteristics. of the dominant for the second theme area of the exposition is thus avoided, and the final closing course of the exposition and in the E major sonority. These observations could be repeated in analyzing much of Faith's music. For such procedures define his musical style. Thus, Faith is a traditionalist in matters of overall structural concept, but less so in his handling of key relationships and harmonic progressions. His claim to being a romantic might be defined as his preference for using consonant sonorities, including thirds, fourths, and fifths, as well as modality rather than serial procedures or sonorities that listeners might describe as dissonant. 
Within the context of the sounds he prefers, he moves freely about implied tonal centers, adding seventh, ninth, and thirteenth, often with unexpected turns that musicians sometimes refer to as color. The second movement of the sonata is not in the traditional scherzo and trio form, but rather extends its opening material to a point where a return seems in order and which does take place. The third movement can be used to illustrate another of Faith's characteristics. It is in ABA form. After a three measure introduction, Faith states his opening theme. This theme unfolds for another seven measures before the onset of the B section. When it returns, it is harmonized with more complex chords and is altered in contour. This provides variety of course, but Faith often employs this technique to an extent that the return of his material Challenges to challenges the listener to recognize it as such. This is particularly noticeable in the final movement of the sonata, where the idea stated in the opening measure. to be present in a very variety of ways throughout the movement interspersed with short episodes. portion of our analysis in this presentation to a consideration of the final piece of the program, the first piano sonata. Harmonic and structural analysis of the other pieces in this presentation would follow along the same lines as those of the sonata. The sonata, as we have seen, was an early work but the essentials of his style, as we have seen it, do not change to a great extent as Faith matures as a composer. Whether he becomes more skillful and creating new harmonic colors, more sophisticated in his use of traditional structures, and in the piano music, more adept at creating pianistic effects that exploit the acoustics of the instrument. I would, however, like to address the pedagogical aspects of the material Faith wrote for teaching. Around 1970, as his compositions were starting to be recognized and published, Shawnee Press publisher requested him to write for teaching material that's suitable for every level student. Faith's didactic works are cleverly crafted to appeal to the piano student while teaching various skills that will improve both technical ability and interpretative awareness. The two sets I will deal with as examples of this type of writing by Faith 
are the set of four pieces called Four Camels, These Near Beginners, and the set seven pieces called Travels, which are for the intermediate level students. The Camel set makes consistent use of alternating hand technique in order to create an easily accessible technical brilliance. For example, in the opening piece entitled Waltz, the opening melody is shared by the right hand playing three notes in the first measure and the left hand only one note. Then, in the second measure, the procedure is reversed. In the next two measures, he divides things a little differently, but uses the same sharing of responsibility between the hands. In the second piece, the Toccatina, the figuration is divided once, once again between the hands. Rapid alternation of hands create the texture of rondina which follows is an exercise in hands playing a slower melody together in parallel motion. As noted, the travels is for intermediate pianists and thus more difficult. Here, however, Faith captures the student's interest by imitating musical styles associated with different countries or cultures. In Limerick, for example, he presents a folk-like tune and then harmonizes it with open intervals in order to give it both an archaic and folk-like quality. In Provence, a similar effect is achieved through the use of drone-like fifths and fourths over a folk-like tune. Next, in Jimmy, Notice the exotic passing harmonies he uses to conjure up the mystery associated with the title. The pedal markings are faces, incidentally. Especially noteworthy is the use of the 4-5 meter over a pedal point and of the 4th and 5th in chant to suggest the rhythmic freedom associated with such musical expression.
I will play the final piece in the set, Caravan, on the program that follows. And I challenge you to imagine the geographical location this music suggests. Besides the solo piano works, he has 60 songs published, four little operas, and three piano concertos. For reference, there is a complete list of his piano works and discography that I placed it with today's program. Now let's take a short intermission, and after that, I will present three selected his piano works in this program. Thank you. The first piece is titled Halloween which is from his five pieces for piano. Halloween is the best known comic servant character from the Italian Commedia dell'arte. Fate said that he tried to capture the humorous image of the characters in his music. represents different island. For example, in First Island, Faith said he was inspired from one of African islands, which he described as barbaric. 
and second island represents the image of Southern Pacific Island, such as Tahiti. This set is dedicated to Dr. Stuart Gordon. In this piece, Faith achieved a climax placed through the use of dissonance, more complicated harmony, and more impressionistic quality. I chose Second Island for this presentation because it is one of composer's favorites. Thank you. 
Today's final program is Faith's first piano sonata. Faith chose to write a formal piano sonata after he learned and performed some of Beethoven's piano sonatas. He also mentioned that since Hindemith wrote three piano sonatas, he felt composing in the sonata genre was a necessary thing to do. After he wrote his third sonata, he decided to explore other genres and never went back to the sonata again. The first sonata is dedicated to Walter Robert, his piano teacher at Indiana University. As noted, Hindemith was a major inspiration as he wrote this sonata. However, Faith said that he decided to move away from Hindemith for his later sonatas. He started the first sonata when he was 19 years old in 1945. He completed it in 1947. The sonata was originally intended only in three movements, but then he added second movement much later in 1960 then published in 1962 and revised in 1980. The latest version was published in 2009 by Shani Press Ha Leonard. I consulted the both first and the latest edition in the preparation of performance for today. Also, Faith and I discussed this sonata in my interview with him he modified some rhythmic figures and dynamic. Thank you again for coming. I really appreciate your support and I really hope you enjoyed Richard Faith's music.